Hey guys, James here from 5 Star Rating 22. Alright guys, here's the next painting vid you guys have been waiting for. Uh, I'm pretty excited. This is going to be my own color scheme from the army uh, that I use personally of my Space Marine army. So it's going to be a little longer. You might see a little bit more different steps and stuff like that. So hopefully you guys enjoy it. And here's Lucky. He wanted to introduce it, but you guys already know it's Terminator. So here we go, guys, uh, from start to start to end. I wanted to show you guys here on this model, uh, there's kind of like a, a sheen to it, like an oil, kind of a gloss sheen, you can see there, and that's release agent. And so, uh, anytime I see that, I take and I'll actually wash my model. So you want is a nice soft soap, mild soap, uh, no bleach additives or anything like that, just an old toothbrush, and then I got some lukewarm water here. So what I'm going to do is just add a little bit of soap to my brush, uh, and then I'm going to add, add some water to it, kind of get it sudsing up, and then take it and and scrub the model real good. Now when you're doing this you want to take your time, you know, uh, make sure that you get into all the crevices and stuff like that. If you're gonna if you're gonna take the time to wash your wash your model off, you know, especially if you think there's release agent on it, um, go you know, you want you want to make sure you do a good job on it. I'll even do what I do here is, you know, I'll give it a good once over here, uh, rinse it off a bit and then uh, I'll go over it again just real quick, uh, just to make sure that, you know, that I that I think I've got everything. So um, that's just, you know, that's something that I'll do anytime I think, or, you know, it might just be that the, the, the model just, you know, the plastic was heated in a way that it kind of has a gloss to it, but uh, I don't want to take any chances, so. And then to speed up the process, if you're kind of impatient on this stuff, waiting for it to dry, I just took a uh, washcloth, you know, and just kind of dabbed away the larger, larger pools of water and stuff, just to kind of speed up the process, so. And then for you guys out there who've been waiting, um, I've, I've, uh, haven't changed my blade in quite a while. Um, I went ahead and changed it for for this uh, painting vid. So, hope you guys are happy with that. It, it was it, it needed. I haven't changed it like a month, so it was well overdue. And then of course, just gonna take my plastic snips or plastic side cutters or uh, whatever you want to call them, um, and go ahead and cut that out. So, but you guys know how to do that. So let's just go ahead and skip that. So once you get them all cut out, uh, you're gonna take and we're gonna do the fun fun part of demolding it or delining it or whatever you guys call it for that as well. Now, uh, when you do this, take your time, you know, this is important. This is a step that's going to make a big difference, especially if someone picks up your guys, something that they'll notice those. Those really pop out, so, you know, it's it's worth taking your time. If you're going to do this, take your time and, and get all over and make sure to do a good job. And then also some extra bits. I'm going to add a couple purity seals and then a flagpole. Uh, I'm going to add extra to this model, so... Now, if you're going to do that, you want to make sure, you know, demold uh, or take the lines off those as well, so... Um, and then <coughs> what you want to do, what I'm taking here and doing is uh, just blowing the model just to try to get that the, the dust and the plastic uh, stuff left over from the from demolding it. So and then you know cleaning up my work area because you don't want all the all that those flakes of plastic all around. Now I'm using testers some or plastic cement. Um, I ran out of my army painter, but uh, the reason I like using plastic cement or plastic glue is it gives you a little bit more play time with it. It doesn't harden as fast as the regular super glue. So I like if you if you're doing a plastic model, uh, I'd recommend using uh, like a plastic glue or a plastic cement. And testers is really good. I really like the bottle applicator with that nice needle nose. So, and then most of the time here you want to take and uh, you you know dry fit everything. Now I'm taking and I'm gonna bore out the storm bolter. Now with the storm bolter, it's a double barreled gun. So when I, when I do these, a lot of times what I'll do to try to make it even is I'll drill in a little bit. I'll drill on one side and then the other side. I'll drill in a little bit, come back and you know, or pull the pull the drill out, make sure that I'm kind of going even, and then uh, I'll go ahead and do it the rest of the way if I am. But if I'm not, you know, it's easier to go in a little way is take some green stuff, smooth that back out, and give it another shot. But I lucked out this time and got it first go. So, all right. So, again, I'm just kind of dry fitting everything on there. I'm not going to super glue the arms on yet, and you'll see why. I'm actually not going to super glue those on uh, for till the very end, actually. But you want to make sure to dry fit everything first, especially these parts that are like the uh, pre-fits where they have the nubs. You want to make sure to dry fit those because sometimes they'll be a little big and they don't fit on there real good, and you'll have to, like, green stuff it or cut them down or shave them down to, to get them to fit right. So, And, again, uh, less glue is more, so... And then now I'm going to take the flake pole. Now with this, the the this back plate is a little bit has a little bit of a curvature to it. Um, if you want, if uh, I I thought it was all right. I, I but if you want and you think that you want to kind of angle the flake pole base there, just take like a file, you know, and kind of angle it with the with the back plate a little bit if you need to. But I thought it was pretty it was pretty flat right at the top, so it, I think it went on all right. And again with the plastic cement, it's really nice for things like this where you're kind of free basing it. 
Um, it's really nice. So you have that that few extra seconds of play time to get it, you know, get it centered and whatnot on there. So again, that's another good reason to have uh, or to use plastic cement or plastic glue. And then I decided to use these skulls. Now I, I showed this part here. Um, if anyone knows, like if you can get these a bit sorted or something like that, these plastic skulls that go on the base with the bullet holes through them, let me know. I'd really like to get those. Now for my purity seals here, uh, since this is going to be a flay car carrier eventually for my army, I wanted to have I wanted to have uh, uh, some extra purity seals on them, and I wanted to have them. I don't know why, but I thought it'd be cool to have them all on one side since he has one on his uh, left foot already or above by his uh, ankle there. Um, I wanted to have all the the three purity seals on one side, kind of going. Uh, I wasn't sure at first at which way, but I decided to go straight up with them. So what I'm doing is I just kind of, you know, dry fit it on there, seeing kind of where you thought, where I thought maybe it'd look good and stuff. But I decided to go. I wanted to go straight up with them, one by the foot, one at the hip, and then one up by his shoulder. Now, since I'm putting it on the uh, up here by where his arm's kind of going to be, I wanted to make sure to get it right on the corner. Um, you know, I, as far f as far to the corner as I could while still being on there. And then, of course, take the I took the arm here just to make sure that it wasn't going to be in the way, and you're still going to be able to kind of see the purity seal. So, uh, if you decide to do do something like that, you know, you know, make sure that you you put the arm on and make sure that it's not going to be be obstructive or in the way in any way. So, that's a good thing to do. So you can kind of see there now I've got everything. Now this is uh, all the model, uh, pretty much except for the banner. So and then again, you know, like uh, this is a time to make sure to double check everything. Make sure you didn't miss any lines, any glue that kind of pressed out or anything like that. So, but so you can see that's kind of how that's everything besides the banner. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the arms off and I'm going to bore with my with my uh, drilling vise here, my pin vise. I'm going to take it and bore it uh, up at an angle and make a little hole here. And I'll show it, you'll see why here in a second, but um, I'm doing it at an angle. So that's a good thing to do. And then what I'm going to take is a toothpick, make sure that it's going to fit in there right, because that's what I'm going to use to hold it. And then I'm going to take a uh, uh, school tack, or poster tack, just that blue tack stuff you can buy at like most uh, 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 stores, convenience stores and stuff like that. And I just use my sculpting tool to kind of push it in. Now I'm using the poster tack is to hold it, to give it a good a good hold, uh, to make sure that when I when I go to paint on this, that it's not gonna you know move around and stuff. So take your time, make sure to get it get it on there good, so that it that when you're painting it, you can put some pressure on it without it you know falling off all the time or moving around. So go ahead and make sure to get that in both arms. Then I just took my fence here for some foam, so I can have something to prop it up after the, when I want to let them dry, so I don't have to set them down. Now I'm taking black from the yellow game color, a couple drops of thinner. And we're gonna do the base coat. Now I'm just using a nice, I'm using a nice uh, wider brush on this because I want to do this quick since I thinned out my base coat quite a bit. And again, this is gonna be done in two layers. Again, I'm using poster tack on top of a uh, uh, old school uh, Games Workshop, Games Workshop paint pot. Now since it's so thinned out, watered out. Uh, the base coat here. You want to make sure that you're kind of continuously moving the paint around and moving, pulling it out of the crevices and stuff. Because otherwise, it with the watered down consistency, what'll happen is it'll seep into those crevices and you'll start to lose detail. So you want to kind of work it around and you know uh, be kind of quick. And I I wiped off the knobs on the arm there because I didn't want to have a whole bunch of glue on there. I, I wanted to try to keep it kind of semi clean. But again, you want to continue to move it around. Don't forget to do the arms, obviously. And again, you know keep moving that paint around and pulling it out of the crevices and stuff. Alright, so now you can see we've got a nice uh, pretty even base coat there. Uh, nice and matte. So, And then the arms as well. Nice base coat. Everything's covered. And that was two coats. Uh, that took me two coats to get to that. So not too bad. Now we're going to take a medium dry brush here. And with the medium dry brush I'm going to take uh, cold gray and black from game color or uh, the, yellow, the yellow game color. Black and cold gray. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my wet palette and two drops of cold gray, one drop of uh, the yellow, uh, the yellow black from game color, and then one drop of thinner into this. And then take and I mixed it real good with uh, with my dry brush here. So and then once you get it mixed real good, um, if when you're mixing it with it, sometimes it'll get up into the ferrule of your brush. I take and I took and uh, rinsed it off and then wiped and dried it real good before I went ahead to do the dry brushing. So. And then wipe it real good and starting from the top uh, in quick brushes, you know, uh, and trying to get uh, from all angles. You always kind of want to go against the, against where you're trying to highlight against the lines or the, the place that it's going to catch. You kind of want to go against that, you know, kind of opposite direction of that. 
and this is going to be this is um the reason I do 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 this jibbers first it's kind of messy and I want this all over the model any parts of the armor that are going to be black um I I dry brush I dry brush everything pretty much you know it just kind of happens um but I want you know I want a good dry brush especially like on those on the back of the legs there you can see with the the armor parts that kind of jut out and then on the front there and the edge of the armor plates and stuff so you can see now what I'm doing here is I'm checking um with black when you're highlighting black it, it's it's it, it can it can either look really good or you can end up messing it up and you can see there that my front on the front legs there it was a little bit lighter than on the back legs you want to make sure to try to get that even plus I wanted the top parts of those of the knee guards kind of there I wanted those a little bit more bright so just make sure that you kind of you know when you when you do this dry brush if you do this uh, make sure that you kind of get it even all over you want it you want it evenly evenly highlighted all over the model of course we're going to do more we're going to add more highlights and stuff to this model later on but um this is and this is also why we we took the arms and and put them on the post because it makes it it makes it easier for this dry brushing step to to get everything and get all over now don't worry about this if you're being messy and stuff like this since this is the first thing we're doing you can be messy now remember to match up you know take the arms put them next to the arm and make sure that it doesn't look like you highlighted the arms more or something like that so make sure to kind of match it up now we're taking cold gray and this is just one to one with thinner again and we're gonna start uh, base coating some of the base coating some of the uh, details on there so we're gonna take cold gray and that's one to one with thinner and then I'm using my Kalinsky travel brush size one and I'm gonna do this chest eagle here uh, <coughs> now with this it's thinned out nice which is good so make sure you're putting on a nice thin coat nice and even and you know take your time at this um, you know it's, it's do it as quick as you can obviously uh, it kind of depends on how steady your hand is and whatnot but um, nice even coat now this took uh, two coats to get this to the to the nice uh, nice color that I wanted so it took two coats and then also I took the insignia down here on the right shin and I do that with the base coat of the dark gray as well um, you know, try to try to avoid eye sockets and stuff like that. I know it's it's hard with watered down paint um, to do a lot of the times, so don't worry about it if you do. You know, don't have a pool of of paint. You know, in the eye sockets, something like that, where it's going to take the detail away. But you know, don't worry about it a ter a terrible lot. Now we take Battle Black from uh, Citadel Games Workshop. I'm going to show you how to kind of touch that up for when you when you mess up uh, and go in those areas and stuff. So I'm just taking a small brush with just a small amount of that bat of black and just running it right around this this detail down here. Just running it all around the edge, a uh, nice thin coat of that, and then right uh, a dot of a dot of the wash into the eyeballs and then the nostril socket and then kind of by the teeth as well. So there you go. You can see it kind of touches that up and makes that look nice. Now again, I'm gonna take the cold gray and do the the skull piece on the belt here as well. So. Uh, just do a do a nice thinned out thing. Trying to avoid eye sockets on this one um, as well. I got some in there, so I'm just taking a wet brush, kind of pulling it out of the socket, as you've seen there. Now with the arms, since we got the dry brushing step done, I'm just gonna go ahead and take this off. Now uh, this this poster tag's pretty easy. You just kind of use it, use the um, the glob of it, you know, and just kind of you kind of poke it at it and and press it at it. And it it pulls out it pulls out uh, pretty easily. You know, it takes a little bit of work to get it out, but it's not that bad. And it doesn't leave anything behind. So, you know, just kind of dab at it with it, and it'll it'll pull out. So there you go. Got that all out. Now we're gonna go ahead and take a uh, black from the yellow game color as well. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna paint any spots that I think that might be able to be seen or something like that. So just a nice line right around the edge where the poster tack had been covering it up. So once I did that, that's dry. Now we're going to go ahead and add the arms back onto the model here. I'm um, not super gluing these on. These fit pretty snug. So I, I'm just going to put them on so I have easy, I have, I have the ability to take them off when I need to. And then we're going to take the cold gray as well and do the skull on his right wrist, as you can see here. So that's pretty much it. That's all done for now. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, stay tuned for part two. This might be a three, maybe four-part series. But thanks again for watching. Have a good one.